thank you for coming to my talk. Yeah, it's about a container image signature overview. Um, I am Philip Bielitz, that's me, that's my face. Uh, I'm an IT security engineer at uh, SSE, and I am also a maintainer of the Connoisseur Open Source project. What Connoisseur is, you're going to learn within this talk. So what to expect from this talk? Um, I'm a give a very short uh, motivation why we talk about uh, image signatures and why you should care about image signatures and then quickly jump into the two main topics. How do we actually sign image uh, container images and how do we verify those signatures within a Kubernetes cluster? And at the end, I hope some of you have learned something about uh, signatures and can actually uh, employ them in your own clusters. So a short motivation. Um, why are we doing this? Um, we are basically trying to protect against uh, these supply chain attacks, um, these pesky supply chain attacks that pop up uh, in the past years uh, every now and then. And uh, yeah, so here we have a, a example setup. We have our code repository where we have our containerized uh, application. This containerized application is going to run through a CI/CD pipeline where we're going to build our images. Um, push these images into our container registry and eventually deploy it into our cluster. The two uh, attack points we care here about are an attacker who might be able to inject malicious images into our container registry or in, in our image registry and any attacker who somehow got access uh, to our cluster and can kubectl and uh, run up uh, random pods uh, with malicious, malicious images. Are we going to solve these problems? Well, with container images and uh, making sure that only actually trusted um, content ever hits our cluster. And um, how are we going to actually implement this? I'm going to show now. Um, the first step is how do we actually sign our images? And before that, we actually have to uh, question ourselves um, what are we actually signing? I mean, we're signing container images. Yes, that's that's clear. But what does it actually mean? What exactly is a container image? Uh, image? Uh, a container image uh, follows the um, OCI image uh, format specification, OCI standing for Open Container Initiative. And this specification says a container consists of this manifest file. Uh, this is a JSON file. And these uh, manifest files uh, reference uh, a config file and a bunch of image layers. The config file contains information such as what, uh, which uh, environment variables uh, should be set in a container. And the image layers are a bunch of tarballs, which can be extracted uh, on the system and then squashed together to actually make up the whole file system that is within a container. And Yes, the manifest file references all of these. And the manifest file itself can be referenced in two ways, either by an image tag or by a digest. The image tag is this muta uh, mutable human uh, readable descriptor, such as, for example, on Redis Alpine, the Alpine tag, which roughly gives you an idea what could be behind the image or what the image is based on. So in this example, this gives us the idea that the Redis image is based on Alpine. A Debian tag would give us the idea that might be based on Debian. The point is, it doesn't actually have to be this way. Uh, just because it says Alpine doesn't mean Alpine has to be behind it. It's mutable, and someone could trick you in thinking uh, that you're downloading an Alpine image, and in reality, you're actually getting a Debian image. In contrast, there are the Digests. The digests are immu immutable and are unique hashes of this manifest file and actually correspond to the actual content that is behind your uh, container image. Since, um, since each of these image layers are referenced by digest as well, if any of the image layers get changed, their digest change. If their digest change, the manifest file uh, changes and therefore the digest of the manifest file changes. So everything is connected and 
a uh, digest gives you an exact representation of a certain status uh, a container image has. And this is why the digest um, always is in some or another way used for any kind of uh, signature tooling. I'm going to talk about. There are a few uh, options you can use for actually signing your container images, such as um, Notary callsign, Notary v2, or uh, the community attestation service. I'm going to talk about the first two, which are uh, Notary and cosign. If you're really interested in Notary version 2, you want to know what they're doing, then you can approach me uh, and I can give you a rundown uh, what they're trying to uh, achieve and uh, how they are different from Notary v1. But for the interest of time, I'm going to skip Notary v2 in this talk. So the first one is uh, the original Notary, Notary v1. It's uh, one of the earliest solutions and also known as Docker Content Trust, uh, which tells you that Notary is fairly closely connected to the whole Docker ecosystem and the Docker client. And the basic idea of uh, Notary is to store signature data in an external server called the Notary server. Now, why are we storing signature data actually somewhere else and not in the image itself. Well, if you now inject additional data into the uh, container image, then you change the digest, which is the very thing uh, we actually want to sign and don't want to change. And what if we add multiple signatures to a single uh, container image, then the second signature made, uh, may assign the digest with the first signature and every Everything gets confusing, and that's why we actually separate these two, the uh, container image and the actual signature data. And in the case of Notary, we're going to put the signature data in an external server. So uh, how do we actually sign? Uh, pretty much simply by using your uh, common Docker push command, uh, with the exception that you have to set the Docker content trust environment label to 1. And when you do that, everything in the background happens automatically and you are getting a signature. What's actually happening in the background is the following. Um, internally, you're going to create a, a bunch of uh, keys that you then going to uh, use to, um, to sign a manifest file, which you also uh, generate. This manifest file has a list of uh, public keys that correspond to the keys you just generated. It has a reference to your image. And more importantly, it has, a, it has a mapping between the image tag you're trying to sign with an image digest that actually corresponds to the image. Um, yes, and all these manifest files then get signed with the keys you generated and then pushed into the notary server. Why are we doing this? Well, that gets a bit more clear when we look at the verification side of things. So verification works why, via a just Docker pull or Docker image pull, again, with the environment variable set to 1. And then what happens? You're going to request these manifest files from the notary server, validate the signature of these manifest files with the public keys you generated, and then look for these mappings uh, between tag and digest. Um, so if you are looking for uh, the signature of image tag 1, you're going to look in the mapping for tag 1. And instead of actually pulling the image by tag, you then instead uh, pull the image by actually using the digest, since basically Notary tells you, instead of using tag 1, please use digest. Please trust me uh, by verifying the signature of this file. And that's the whole flow, how uh, Notary works, and how you can be sure that uh, when then actually taking uh, the image by uh, digest, that everything is trusted. Um, this whole why we are doing multiple manifest files have different uh, types of keys uh, actually gives us some benefits, which are that we have some kind of, uh, some kind of freshness guarantee on all the signatures. So the signatures can expire and be um, re-signed uh, every now and then, so we can be sure that our signatures are actually fresh and up-to-date. 
uh, we have some kind of delegation of roles, so a different hierarchies of keys, so that certain keys can only do certain things and other keys can do more. And we also have some kind of uh, key compromise uh, resilience, so should one of our keys actually get stolen or compromised, uh, we can fairly easy, easily rotate these keys uh, without much effort. These are the plus points. Uh, the other, on the other hand, are I fairly simplified all of this. Um, the, the, the actual logic behind it is really, really complex. Um, if you're uh, interested in it, uh, you can look up the update framework. That's basically a whole implementation of the update framework, um, and which is also why uh, the, the whole complexity is uh, the main reason why there's a notary version 2. Notary version 1 never really uh, yeah, was popular enough uh, that uh, many people use it, used it. But nonetheless, it's a fairly um, powerful, uh, powerful system um, once you actually know how to use it. And yeah, there's also the, the, the um, down part of uh, actually needing extra infrastructure. Um, if you're actually using Harbor as your image registry, uh, you can circumvent this because Harbor comes with a notary instant included, so you don't have to worry about this part. Yeah, the other um, signing solution is Cosign. It's a much newer one, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, it's developed by Sixstore, and it actually doesn't need any in, uh, additional infrastructure. Um, here you can generate your own key pair by using cosine generate key pair. Then you get a private and public key, and then already uh, get going and do cosine uh, sign to sign a given image. What happens here is that you generate a certain payload that uh, includes the digest of the image you're trying to sign uh, to trying to sign uh, at the given moment. And then over the payload, actually create the signature with the key. And then put the payload and the signature in a so-called, or not so-called, but, uh, but uh, in a kind of pseudo image. Um, so you're using the, uh, again, the OCI image format. Uh, instead of a, a config, uh, you, you put an empty config in there. And instead of the uh, image layers, you put your payload and your signature in there, and then push this pseudo image into your registry next to your actual image that you tried to sign. Um, where to put the image? Uh, this is a convention that you put it in the image name colon the digest of the um, image dot zig. Why are we doing this? So we actually know where to look for the signature once we try to verify an image which is the next part. We do cosine verify. We want to look for some uh, signature. Uh, we can do that by uh, looking at the digest that our current image has. Then per convention uh, request our registry for the image colon digest.zig. There should be our signature. Uh, then get this pseudo image. And in the pseudo image, we can find the signature that we can validate with the public key. And uh, if we have done that, we have this trusted payload that has the digest in it as well. And then we have can make a cross-reference whether the image we have with the digest corresponds to the digest that is in our payload. And then we can be sure that everything is fine and works out. That's the whole process. Uh, it's fairly simply, simple to use and has a quite big uh, feature set. Uh, you, can, uh, you have a key management, a key management system support uh, where you can put your keys, for example, in Kubernetes um, secrets. You don't actually, actually have to um, provision them on your local machine, but in a Kubernetes um, cluster. And then Cosign will access the Kubernetes cluster to actually get the keys and then do the verification and signing. Um, there is support for annotating your signatures. If you want to do add, uh, for example, git commit hashes into your signatures uh, to get some extra value. And there's also keyless support where you don't actually have to use any keys or not. Uh, you're still using keys, but you're using ephemeral keys that are 
uh, generated from your email address and this email address then via an OICD process is verified that it actually uh, belongs to you. Yes, that's cosine. You can check it out. Now the question is, uh, how do we actually verify? Um, or a better question is, how do we actually verify inside of Kubernetes? We now how to verify with cosine and how to verify with notary, but we don't know how we actually tell Kubernetes to do all these things for us. Uh, so every time we want to create any kind of resource, a deployment, stateful state, daemon set, whatever, uh, Kubernetes uh, ideally should do all these verifications for us and we don't have to worry about anything. We can do this with admission controllers. They have been uh, mentioned a few times in other talks. I'm going to uh, go through them again. So these are little services you can install in your uh, cluster and then hook up into the uh, Kubernetes API. Hooking up into the Kubernetes API means essentially that every time you want to create any kind of resources, here an example, uh, a deployment, you go through three steps. First, your, the API server is going to authenticate you, then authorize you, and then a so-called admission review is sent to all your admission controllers. This admission review contains information such as who is trying to do what with what kind of spec. So in this case, user A tries to create a deployment with the image Redis. And based on this information, all your admission controllers can make certain decisions and then either deny the whole request or allow it. Then there are a differentiation between two kinds of admission controllers. They are validating and mutating admission controllers. The validating admission controllers just do the decision, yes, I want this resource uh, to be uh, deployed or no, I don't want this. And the mutating additionally to denying or allowing it can also uh, mutate the whole resource that is being uh, deployed. So a ad mutating admission controller can, for example, just change the Redis image to MongoDB if it pleases, or if the admission controller is set up to do so. I don't know why you would write such an admission controller, but you could. And um, that's exactly what we're um, somehow abusing with uh, trying to implement uh, verification into Kubernetes. We're writing admission controllers that actually extract the image reference inside our resources and then uh, uses the, uh, either the notary verification or the callsign verification on these uh, image references. We can also apply some uh, policies on these images. So for example, for certain images, we only want to use certain keys. Or for certain images, we uh, want to use the one verification method and for others, the other verification methods. If you have like differentiation between some images you sign with notary, others with cosine, you can do that. And yeah, at the end, you can either deny or allow the whole request and also, if you uh, verified the whole signature, you can mutate the image reference to actually use the digest instead of the image tag. That's the whole process of pretty much all the admission controllers that try to solve this whole uh, image verification process. There are a few of them. Uh, I, I listed some of them uh, here. There are probably a lot more. This is not a complete list. Uh, which one you actually use in the end depends on pretty much your use case. Uh, do you just want to have image uh, verification or do you want to do a bit more? Some of these admission controllers are not super um, specialized in just doing uh, image verification. And it also depends on what kind of uh, signature scheme you actually want to use. If you want to use Notary, then for example, maybe Kyverno isn't a good solution because Kyverno, to my knowledge, doesn't support the whole notary's uh, signature scheme. Yeah. Pick your favorite one. Uh, I'm going to talk about Connoisseur, since me and my colleagues are actually maintainers, maintainers of the uh, whole project. So I'm giving you a short rundown how things look on the Connoisseur side. So if you want to explore Connoisseur, you can just uh, clone the whole project and then use our Helm chart to install it into your uh, cluster. And then you can already start um, trying to 
run certain images and see whether Connoisseur allows them or not. We have uh, in our policy some predefined uh, keys in there, so you can already start uh, running the Hello World image. It will uh, allow it since the Hello World image uh, on Docker Hub is actually signed. Um, and then you can try to uh, run an unsigned image and see that Connoisseur will actually deny it because there's no signature information for this image. Once you've done that, uh, you can actually explore our policy uh, and see if you want to write your own policies. Uh, policies are set up in a certain way. It's uh, separated in two parts, uh, in the policy part and in the validators part. The policy part consists of multiple rules that define a image pattern so that if you get an image, only one of these rules in your policy actually applies. And then these rules, in a way, um, link the image to one of our validators. And the validators are actually deciding what signature scheme to use. So in this example, uh, you're going to um, match the image onto our notary uh, validator that does the whole notary validation. And there you can um, then also define your public keys that are being used to actually do the val uh, validation. The same works for Connoisseur, uh, for, for, for Cosign, um, where you then just use a different uh, validator, a Cosign validator. And we also have special validators that allow for static uh, allow or deny listing. So if you have certain images in your cluster that you know that won't ever have signatures, such as internal uh, Kubernetes um, services as the API server um, that you don't want to validate because you know they won't have signatures and you don't actually maintain those images, then you can put them on a, a allow list and thus always skip the validation in a sense. And now a small demo, and I hope that it's big enough on a scale from 1 to 10. Is this? Um, yeah, here we actually uh, use our Helm chart to install a Connoisseur in a cluster. Uh, that was successful. Then we're going to look how uh, the deployment looks like. We have three pods of a Connoisseur. And then we already try to run a image, in this case, the Hello World image. Then we're going to wait for a few seconds and then we see that the pod got created because the Hello World image actually is signed. And we have another signed image. Uh, this is one of our test images that uses our own public key from our company. That works as well. And then uh, in the last step, we're trying to run a unsigned image that doesn't have uh, any, Im uh, any signature. And if we try to do that, Connoisseur will eventually say, that the image is denied and will never be deployed into our cluster. That's pretty much it. That's the gist of it, how to do verification in Kubernetes. Where to go from here? If you want to uh, have a closer look at Connoisseur, you can um, explore our feature set. We can do multiple things. We uh, allow for verification of notary v1 and cosign and um, support uh, some of the feature that notary and cosign uh, actually um, give us. So for notary, the delegation of different keys. So for example, you could define delegations such as linting, testing, and scanning in your pipeline, and then uh, let all of these steps um, give a signature to your image. And at the end, uh, when you actually deploy your image in your cluster, check whether linting, testing, and scanning ever run through by checking uh, all, three, all three of these um, signatures. That can work. This is a use case. And yeah, the same for cosine. We also have things like detection mode when you actually try to implement all of this uh, the first time. You don't want to uh, block all your developers from using any kind of images. Uh, this, you, you might 
might get a uh, get in a little bit of trouble um, with your uh, developers if they can't uh, deploy and uh, try to do some quick fixes. So with detection mode, you can um, only activate warning should uh, no uh, validation uh, be possible. But instead of completely blocking it, it just gives out the warning. Uh, we also support uh, alerting, so you can send uh, for failed verifications a message to some Slack channel uh, or anywhere else. And uh, things like namespace validation, that you only uh, allow validation on certain namespaces and um, yeah, ignore it on other uh, namespaces. And also, if you want to join us, we are a community-driven uh, project. Uh, you can really help us out um, to get more features into Connoisseur and just um, yeah, help support the whole ecosystem of uh, image signatures. That'd be great. And that's pretty much it. If you want to check out uh, the Connoisseur uh, GitHub page, there's a QR code. And yeah, I hope some of you have learned a thing or two about image signatures and can uh, start deploying your own signatures in your own clusters and validate them. Thanks.